Hey there, hello everybody, it's Harry Sue here live. I'm a pit master out of Los Angeles, California, and uh, I'm the head of cook of the uh, barbecue team, Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. Been around the country and around the world a few times uh, cooking barbecue and teaching classes. And I always get questions from my viewers and my students as to some of the most pressing and common topics out there. So today, the topic I'm gonna cover is a somewhat controversial topic about using food additives, in, in specifically a flavor enhancer called MSG. MSG is basically a uh, chemical compound, uh, it's monosodium glutamate. So if you were probably wondering what it is, it, it looks like this. So I'm gonna come over here and show you what it is. This is what MSG is. This is the seaweed kombu from Japan. And if you look closely, I'm gonna put it near the camera. Can you see this little white dust on it here? So this little white dust here is MSG monosodium glutamate if you all if you ever had uh like a caesar salad uh, you had a uh, barbecue uh, i'm sorry you had a burger with the cheese dripping over the side uh, you've had marinara sauce spaghetti sauce you had soy sauce or fish sauce well all those are naturally occurring sources of monosodium glutamate and what it is is actually uh invented or it was discovered by actually a german chemist in 1866 i think his name was carl uh, Riedhausen, but that's not important. Uh, what's important is in 1907 8, uh, Professor Ikeda, who's a chemist uh, with the uh, University of Tokyo, was trying to figure out hey, you know, what's this white stuff or this crystalline stuff on this kombu seaweed that gives uh, soups and stews in Japan so much flavor? Because the Japanese have been using kombu for a thousand years to flavor their food. And actually, when he was trying to do this assignment, he was actually trying to create kind of like a meat flavor, or he called it a, a delicious flavor, which uh, umami is. And it's been added to one of the, uh, to be the fifth uh, taste group after sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. So what this is, is basically it gives you a very delicious flavor and uh, you can add it to your food uh, basically to create a better flavor and deeper flavor like umami flavor. Now, uh, you may not be aware, but uh, human beings have a, a natural affinity for MSG or monosodium glutamate because uh, it's one of the most common amino acids on earth. Uh, there are 20 amino acids on earth and glutamic acid is one of them. So this is the sodium salt of the glutamic acid. And uh, a lot of people don't know this, but actually a uh, human uh, breast milk has the highest concentration of glutamic acid in the animal kingdom. And I believe it's like six times more MSG in human breast milk than it is in cows. And your body actually produces this. Uh, you have about, I think, four pounds of MSG in your, well, glutamic, uh, glutamic acid in your body as amino acid. And uh, you ma actually manufacture this. That's why it's called non-essential amino acid. So what is it? Is this, this gray substance is a uh, powder. And the powder can be made into a uh, food flavoring. Of, and I'll show you some examples here. So I'm going to pan my camera over. And you can see here, here's the uh, big bottle of MSG. You can buy them in bulk, they're not very expensive. Uh, you can get them as accent also, and uh, you can get it as a small dispenser called Ajino Moto. So uh, you can use this uh, in competition barbecue. Uh, a lot of teams do, I do when I compete, and it just gives a little boost of flavor. And uh, if you already use things like soy sauce, uh, you like spaghetti sauce, you eat the cheese seizure salad, uh, fish sauce, all, all these have naturally occurring MSG. So these versions of MSG, uh, people always ask me, Harry, how do they work? Well, they work because your tongue uh, has a taste receptor for MSG. So in around the year 2001, uh, researchers in the University of San Diego uh, discovered that you have a receptor in your tongue for MSG. And uh, in 2006, uh, Japanese uh, researchers actually found out that you have a uh, MSG receptor in your stomach, in your gut. And when your, your, your stomach senses uh, uh, the uh, uh, glutamate, the glutamic acid, uh, your, your body begins this, this kind of stimulate its digestive process. So, um, as you probably have heard, uh, MSG is controversial uh, because of uh, something they call the uh, Chinese restaurant syndrome. Kind of like when you eat uh, too much uh, Chinese food, uh, you get uh, a kind of like a headache, uh, maybe heart palpitations and, and kind of a weird feeling. Well, you know, I, I have to tell you that uh, the study after study has shown that uh, when you consume MSG in the correct amount or safe amount, it's, it's, fair, it's perfectly safe. Now, 
you need to be aware that the fact I'm talking now and you can understand what I'm saying and you can remember what Harry said is because you have basically glutamic acid in your brain. So glutamic acid is a neurotransmitter in your brain. It allows you to understand and comprehend and let your brain send messages all over the brain. Uh, so when you consume glutamic acid, right, and you may basically if you eat too much, right, that probably I would say is not is not good for you. So a lot of these studies that kind of like scare tactics out there, you know, they, they feed the rat 50 pounds of caffeine and red dyes and they say, well, you know, caffeine is bad for you. So my recommendation to you is that study after study has proven that MSG is very, very safe. So you really don't need to fear it. You just need to know how to use it in the proper way. Uh, in fact, for those of you who enjoy seafood, you might be aware that a lot of sea creatures in the ocean, especially shellfish, have a lot of glutamic acid because when you live in the ocean, uh, your body's salinity is about 1%. So your blood is 1%, your, your, your body solution is 1%. But actually, Mother Nature devised an ingenious method for you to live in the ocean by buffering the intake of salt when you're in the ocean using glutamic acid. That's why a lot of sea creatures, if you are a fisher, fisher person and you fish fish from the ocean and fish fish from the land, you always notice that fish in the ocean always taste better because of a higher glutamic acid. So there you go, a little factoid about glutamic acid. Now the question is, is glutamic acid safe? The answer is yes. And how do you use uh, MSG uh, in the form like this, in the white powder? Uh, you can actually shake shake some of it uh, onto your onto your meat or onto your sauce or onto your soups and stews. And uh, the proper amount that I try to use is I use about about say half the amount of MSG that I would use salt. Can that make sense? So let's say if I were to salt food uh, to get a proper amount of salt on food, you probably need to salt it about one percent. So figure that ratio. Of let's say if you cook 100 pounds of meat, the proper amount of salt to salt 100 pounds of meat will be about one pound, let's say, right? So the amount of glutamic acid, I would put probably maybe about like a third of a pound for 100 pounds of meat. So that's a good guideline. So when you're using uh, MSG the way I use it, I just shake some on and uh, I shake it about one third the amount of the actual salt I will be used when I'm cooking. All right. So I hope that answers some of your questions about glutamic acid. And uh, I know there's a lot of comments here. So let me let me cycle through the comments. So if you are done with listening to me <laughs> drone on, you can uh, disconnect now. But I'm going to go try to say hello to everybody and do a little Q&A on MSG. Let me go back to the top here. Wow, lots of comments here. OK, here we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Shout out from Veronica Ramirez Vera. Hello. Hello, Veronica. Hello to Matt. Matt Deaton. Hope your Sunday is going great. You know, it's what is a beautiful Sunday. Uh, sun, sun is shining and it's hot in SoCal. Steve Botkin say, hey, hey, Steve Botkin, oh, my desperado buddy. Patrice Miller, people taking MSG out of foods, we keep putting it back in. Yes, that's true because a lot of restaurants today, they put an X sign that says no added MSG. But, you know, unfortunately, what they, people don't realize is MSG is already in your food. So, if, like I said, mentioned earlier, if you enjoy things like soy sauce, you enjoy uh, asparagus, you enjoy tomatoes, uh, you enjoy um, Parmesan cheese, all these uh, items are already naturally chock full of, of MSG. All right, uh, let's see here. Dana Myers, thank you for uh, sharing this, Harry. Yeah, absolutely, Dana. Uh, always happy to share information and knowledge about cooking and barbecue in general. There is so a lot of misconception out there, so we want to dispel the myth so everybody can go around and cook barbecue safely. All right, let's see here. MSG makes everything taste good, even your mother-in-law's cooking. Okay, all right. No low blows and mother-in-laws on my, on my live stream here. Okay, St Steven says hi. Dana Myers says it's urban lore. Well, you know, uh, I have to give some credence to people who complain that when they have the Chinese restaurant syndrome, the symptoms are real, even though it double blind, nocebo uh, tests, they found out that that is really not true. I believe that if we are using glutamic acid as a neurotransmitter in the brain, there's probably a very, very delicate balance. Uh, and I'm not a doctor, nor, that, nor try to be one. But I can believe the theory that because your brain communicates with, with all the neurons using glutamic acid as a neurotransmitter, that if you have an imbalance, let's say you already have some issues, you are manic depressive, you're bipolar, you have anxiety disorder, you're autistic, uh, adding more MSG to your system, I don't know if, if is that a, such a good idea. So I don't usually add MSG when I cook for my family at home because food's already pretty tasty but when I go to for competition I add a little bit MSG a very small amount just to oomph up the flavor to give that umami flavor all right let's see here we go Mike Deaton 
not working on my end today. Maybe later I can watch it. But thank you. Yeah, uh, my, you know, this Facebook stuff is sometimes iffy. And uh, I just have to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I can upload it to YouTube uh, later. All right. Okay, Dana says, lots of evidence in this case, the Chinese restaurant syndrome was a result of cooked in tainted cookers. Okay, Dana, there you go. You know more than me, right? Okay, friends say they're allergic to MSG, but they sure eat my barbecue, <laughs> no problems. Yes, uh, if the barbecue is good, it's, they chow it down, right? What they say is uh, as long as the food is free, beer is free, it's all good food, right? What's the ratio of MSG liquid for injection? David Adams asks, having trouble watching this, I'll play back later for an answer. Yes, the amount of uh, MSG I use is about probably half a teaspoon in about, say, 12 ounces of liquid. That's what I use, all right? Let's see here, Greg Funk, Burn Unit Barbecue. Hey, shout out to, to Greg Funk of Burn Unit Barbecue. Kevin Glenn says, should I add to the rub or use in a finished product? Kevin Glenn, you can do it both ways. Uh, I add some in my, in my rub product and I may, I may add just a touch at the end, uh, depending when I'm plating and I feel that the flavor is not, not uh, deep enough, all right? Robert Bass says, moderation is key. Absolutely, uh, Robert Bass. Uh, moderation is key because you can overdo it. Like anything else, uh, I always tell people, don't over smoke your food, don't over uh, cook your food, don't over salt your food, don't over MSG your food. You'll find that in the taste curve, if you study the physiology and the chemistry of, of MSG, once you cross a certain threshold, adding more MSG will not help you at all, okay? Uh, Dana Meyer says mushroom. Yes, Dana, uh, that's why in my Slap Your Daddy rub here, uh, no secret here, uh, my, my beef rub that I want first uh, place KCBS uh, Rancher Reserve brisket entry. Uh, yes, it's got shiitake mushroom. So it's, the cat's out of the bag. Well, actually the cat's on. The, 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 it's a part of the ingredient list. So no, 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 no harm, no foul. Uh, you can do uh, what I did, which is uh, put some powdered shiitake mushroom. That gives us a great umami flavor. All right, let's see here. Mushroom, David Lester, hello, he David Lester. Hello, Harry. Hello, David. Jim McDougall, Slap Your Daddy alumni makes me nervous <laughs> okay all right i know that every contest you go to uh in california right have the team walking on stage you get awards are all my alumni i feel so proud i have three thousand students are like my little children have gone around the world and populating the world with barbecue love so that makes me really proud barry snyder when are we gonna barbecue again hey you know i just finished cooking two briskets uh for my next uh video for next week uh just as a, a, pre a tease for next week i'm gonna answer the question that people always ask me harry can you win a contest using a Dalmatian rub, which is the traditional Texas rub, just using salt and pepper? I will answer that question next time, all right? Dana Meyer says, love the beef rub. Yeah, thank you, Dana. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in it, like Worcestershire, some citric acid, uh, some, some celery seed. Uh, it's got some shiitake mushroom, so you can make your own rub, use mine, you know, knock yourself out. And then, then Anastopoulos, go get back and get burnt barbecue here. Thanks for the tips. Hey, Lyndon, you're always very welcome. All right, so I'm, I'm at a 12 minute mark now. I'm gonna call it a day. Thank you all for joining me. This video will be on YouTube for archive purposes. So if you ever wanted to know whether MSG is a friend or foe, whether which creature produces more MSG in the baby's milk, whether human beings do or cows do, you found the answer and lots of other trivia. So if you are like my Facebook Live, go ahead, like it, please. And then uh, I'm gonna see it on YouTube late, later. If you like your YouTube, please subscribe and uh, like my videos, all right? And more videos to come. We'll keep you guys posted. Love to join you on a barbecue journey. Send me pictures and most importantly, send me questions and keep spreading barbecue love.